What's up, friends? Oh, it's another gig log. I got another one for you. Holy moly. I did six weddings in eight days and mix in a corporate event for the seventh in eight days. It, it almost broke me. Uh, we'll talk about that. I got the hardest part about it. And hopefully you can learn from this so that if you are in this stretch, like some of you out there are just, I know you're in wedding season right now. It's October. Everybody's getting married. Um, this is one of the things that I found that if I manage just this thing, everything gets easier. So I'll tell you that in a second. I also had the best ending to the weekend that could possibly happen. I have a tip on don't leave money on the table because things are happening right now in the corporate world and I want to talk to you about that. Do not leave money on the table. Here's another tip on how to not do that. And then last but not least, vendor appreciation, why I've been doing this and how it's been awesome for other people as well as me. So mutually beneficial. How about that? Look at that. It's another gig log. Welcome, friends. You can hit me up at DJ Differently anywhere you want. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, freedomdj.com. There's just a whole lot going on here. I just wanted to talk to you and get your guys' advice. Comment below on what you think. If this evokes any kind of emotion within you, then please, let's all learn from this together. Like and subscribe so that I can follow what you're doing. And let's just get after it. <clears throat> Six weddings in eight days. Who does that? It was crazy. So what ended up happening was I did Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday off. Wednesday, I did a corporate event. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday <laughs> was weddings. You don't usually see a lot of Thursday weddings. But man, when they do happen and then you tack on a Friday, by the time you get to Saturday, it's like, God, I am almost dead right now. Sunday is the easiest part because it's just like Friday at a work week. It's like the last one. You're close to the end. That's the easiest part. When you have a long stretch, it's that middle part that is the worst. If you have three, then it's going to be the second one. If you have four, it's the middle two. It's just like any trip you've ever taken. The middle leg is the worst because in the beginning, you're all jazzed up. You're energized. You're ready to go. In the end, you're almost there. But in the, in the middle, it's just like, are we there yet? Like... I, I can't do this again. My God. Um, but I could. And it wasn't the weddings that almost broke me. Because I, I'll tell you, I've got clips. I'll, I'll put up some videos and, and stuff and show you how awesome these weddings were. Six out of six. Just crushed them. Could have done a seventh. Literally by the end of it, I said to myself, I could have done a seventh. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You're just thinking that way because you just finished. But... Dude, you, you, can't, you can only do so much. And it's not because, like, if you're out there and you're watching this and you're like, whatever, dude, I've worked six days and uh, eight days before. Like, that's not that much. Like, talk to me as a waiter working, like, five doubles in a row. I understand. Believe me. I'm not saying that I've worked harder than anybody else out there. I'm not saying that. Talk, you know, talk to somebody in the nursing um, industry. But what I will say is that in my industry, uh, to stand up for myself a little bit, there's no 96% is an A on the paper. There's not. There's none of that. It's 100% or it's pass-fail. Like, you cannot make any mistakes because every time you go to work, it's like the most important day in somebody's life. So I take it so seriously, and that's why I think you get the results that you get when you take it so seriously, but then you also get the stress with that. There's no way to, like, not care about it but also take it seriously. So you have to endure all of the stress that comes along with getting the details down. That was the hardest part of, the, of this stretch. Getting the details down in, an, in a manner where I could manage my bandwidth mentally. So here's what I mean. You work a wedding on Saturday. You work a wedding on Sunday. Okay, cool. Now, Monday, oh man. You have Monday through Wednesday before you start working wed weddings again. And you have four of them. You have three days off before you start working four weddings. So what was really difficult to, for me and I learned this from last year, is managing when to schedule each one of these weddings week out phone call. Because I talked to each bride and groom one week before their wedding. 
But if you have four in one weekend, that means you have to have four one week out calls where you go over everybody's timeline and their individual details and their song selections line by line together. And that's where you really do all the hard work. That's where you're paying attention to every little minute detail. You're walking them through it. You're like a Sherpa taking them up the mountain on all the easy trails. And you're really like looking through it for any kind of red flag so that you can point them out. And you're winning them over when you do that. Because when you show a couple, when they break, you know, put their timeline in front of you and you're just like, I love this. It looks great. But have you thought about why are we doing the shoe game in the middle of the dance floor instead of during you know, dinner? That, that might flow a little bit better. Have you thought about that? Or is that just something that somebody put down? And they're like, oh, no, our coordinator just put it there. Why, why would we do that? And I'm like, well, if you're going to do a shoe game, which is like a game show, why don't we do that during the dinner while everybody's kind of sitting down and, and in the mood for that rather than breaking up an awesome energetic dance floor to, to tell everybody to get the hell off of it so that we can play a little game for five minutes? That, what do you think? And they're just like, yes, of course. It's just... That call takes a lot of mental bandwidth because you really have to put yourself in, into, the, into their night and like really feel the flow of what you're, you're given. And what was funny, <laughs> I said to one of the brides, I was like, hey, okay, so can you send me your timeline before the call? I know we've got a call later. Um, it was the same day. I was like, can you shoot me that timeline? I can't find it anywhere in our emails. It looks like I haven't gotten anything yet. And she was like, oh, yeah, sure. It starts at 4.30 and it ends at 10.30. I was like, okay, I'll talk to you at three. And then in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, okay, so we've got to put this whole thing together. And then on the call, we did. We was like, okay, yeah, it starts at 4.30, but like, let's go through the details of the day. Like, we're going to do the entrances. Is that just all of you guys' wedding party or just you two? And she was like, oh, I didn't even think about any of that. I was like, you're, and you can't get mad at this because it's like they shouldn't know any better. They've never done this before. This is why they hired you. So if it got to the point where you don't have what you need, it is kind of on you for not managing the information in a way that's beneficial to you enough. So I, I, you know, I did a pretty good job leading up to it. I'm doing 21 weddings in two months right now. And I really do my best not to overbook myself, but the challenge is not working the weddings. It is managing the calls ahead of time and getting all the details right so that when you get to the weddings, you can just get into a groove and do what you do. So I really just wanted to highlight that today and point that out because if there's anybody out there who's really like super slammed and you're feeling it, make sure that you are prioritizing your setup calls and your information and really just staying as organized as freaking possible because if you can do that, it just makes everything else flow. All right, so moving on. Don't leave money on the table. Why would you do that? You want to get all the money that you can. Go get your bag, right? Well, something's happening in the corporate world. And I want to talk about it. I am booking events for more than I have ever booked. And I'm not saying that to brag. But I set a record the other day on the amount that I have booked for an event. And I never would have asked for as much if... I, if, okay, let me put it this way. I would have left money on the table for sure. And right before I press record on this episode right now, I just sold an event to um, a hotel and I can feel it. I left money on the table. So let's talk about how not to do that. Because on the one where I set the record, I used a tactic and I used the same tactic over here on the one where I left money on the table just before setting, pressing record here. But it didn't work, and I'll tell you why. So here's what happened. When, first of all, let's talk about if uh, the companies right now haven't w booked like holiday gigs in a long time. So if you're an existing DJ, you should know that what I'm experiencing at least is that companies have had a budget for this now because they haven't spent anything on parties for two years. So they're like, all of them are saying the same thing to me. Like, we really, we haven't had a party in like two years. We really just want to like, go over the top and just show our employees that like we care. And so they're throwing money everywhere at anything so that they can make an awesome party. So what you might think is normal for your typical party, you're leaving money on the table in, in a lot of situations because they have budgets that are like budgeted for way more than that. So I'm not saying screw anybody else over, but make sure that you give them the night. Like I, I know I'm worth whatever they're willing to pay. So I have no problem taking whatever they're willing to pay because no matter what, I'm going to leave them feeling like, oh my God, this guy was awesome. I'd do that again in a heartbeat. So as long as you provide them with a kick-ass night, 
then feel free to follow what the rest of what I'm about to say. When you're talking to companies and they're like, we'd love for you to do this event. For me, they wanted to MC two full days plus a two hour party to kick it off the night before. So that's two days and then a little party the night before. And they ended up paying me five grand to do it. And I was like, wow. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. It's Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Like it's right. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I mean, it's right in the middle of the week. Doesn't affect my weekends for weddings or anything. I'm like, yeah, sure. Okay. It's like double my rent in one event. But when they, when we got to the point of talking, I had sold myself. I had gone through everything. I knew that I had had them basically sold. But when it got to the point of like, what, are, what are you going to charge us for this? I started out by saying, you know, this sounds like a great event, but I'm a little bit concerned that you might not be looking to spend what it might cost for me to do this whole thing. Because they had said, we're going to need you there for eight hours, two days in a row, and then the night before, two hours. And I'm thinking to myself, like, damn, dude, I'm not going to want to do this for anything less than, like, at least a couple grand. And so I said that. I was like, I'm happy to do this. I'll kill it for you. But I got to say, like, I'm a little bit concerned that you might not be willing to spend what it might cost for this. What are you looking to spend here? What's your budget? And that move was so awesome because it put the ball in their court. And now it was them speaking first. And if you can get them to do that, with that simple question, what are you looking to spend? And I didn't say it like a jerk, like, you can't afford me, so, like, what are you looking to spend? I was just like, that's a lot. That's a big, that's, you know, that's a long day. That's a long, two long days. Like, I, I'm happy to do it, but, like, what are you looking to spend on something like this? And they're like, yeah, absolutely. You know, we've got a sponsor for this, but, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so we were hoping, like, five or six grand, we, we could do that. Could we make that work? And now I'm over here, and I, in a lot of situations, DJs will say, sure, absolutely, I can do it for six grand. But check yourself because I know you're happy with five grand. And what is more, I think it's worth more than $1,000. I honestly do. To say, I'll take it for five and be excited and be like, oh, absolutely. If you guys can come up to five, I'm happy to do that event for you. I want you to be excited about it. And that way I'm happy to do it. You guys are excited about getting a deal with me. And you say that so they realize that they're saving $1,000 right there. You're choosing not to spend that 1000 But what you're earning right there is far more than $1,000 worth of goodwill with them. They love you now. They're feeling like, awesome, we got him for five grand instead of six, and we even offered six. He didn't try to screw us. Oh, this guy's great. Like, you've already won them over in, like, one conversation. I'm telling you, it's worth so much more than going for the higher number. Just go for the lower number as long as it's still something you're pumped about because now you're excited. They're excited. You go to the event. You kill it. They pay you. They hire you again. They hire you again. And then, of course, your rates can go up a little bit because, you know, rates go up with time. It's the same common thing. But, dude, that's, that's how you do it, okay? So I just wanted to point that out. Make sure. Now, what happened on this other call that I took right before this recording, I said the same thing. It was a, it was a, a hotel that wanted me to do two Thursdays in December. And I was like, sure, man. And he said the same thing. I just want to throw an awesome party for my employees. They've been dealing with all this BS from everybody in the hotel industry for two years. We haven't been, been able to throw them a party. Please. Just get them hammered, man. Have them, I let them have some fun. Let them let their hair down. I was like, absolutely. And I said, what are you looking for to spend on this? It sounds like a blast. And he came back with, we would love to figure that out. It, it, I, I just, I'm not really sure. I'm shopping around for DJs. What do you think it would cost me to do something like this? And now he threw it right back to me. So now you have to really just kind of throw something out there. And I said, well, you know, dude, I'd love to do, you know, usually I do, you know, a thousand an event. So it was five hours per event. So I was like, you know, usually I could do it for a thousand on a weekday. Um, I'd happily give you a break since we're doing two events. And instead of a thousand each, I'll do it for 800 each. Would that work and do 1600 total? And he's just like, yeah, yeah, that can work. That um, right there. I'm like, God, I could have easily done like 2,500, three grand. I don't even know. Definitely left some money on the table there. But you know what? I booked that gig. And they're going to love me because, again, they're getting a deal. I'm happy about it. It's a number. At least I went with the number. That's the thing I wanted to say. When you have to go and the ball is forced into your court, start with at least a number that if they say yes, you're happy with. Okay? Make sure that you don't start too low. But if it is a number that you'd be happy with, at least start there. And then, you know, we'll take it from there. But, yeah, I could feel it. I definitely left some money on the table there. That guy was smart by not saying anything. Um, and putting it back in my court. Ah. If you can get them to talk first, it's very much beneficial um, to you. Ah. So, 
It's fun. I got one more thing to talk about. I want to do vendor appreciation. Um, how far in are we? Are we close? All right, so I'm almost done. I want to leave you guys with this. Um, it's all about collaboration and word of mouth because if you can get people coming to you saying, hey, listen, this person recommended me and they said you were awesome. Can we get your information in a price quote? You're so much more willing. Um, you're so much more apt. Uh, not willing. You're so much more, uh, I don't know the word for it. You're more susceptible to booking them than anybody else than just cold coming at you in an email. Okay, so if you can get somebody that's just like referred to you, ah, oh, it's the best. So what you want to do is collaborate and shout out any vendors or venues that do a really good job. I've been starting to do that. Like once a week, I'll go onto my social media and I'll do a vendor appreciation post of just another vendor that I witnessed doing an awesome job while I worked with them. And while I'm witnessing it, I'm like, oh, this is it. This is the one for vendor appreciation. Look at this photographer. She's killing it. Just a fun, bubbly attitude, great around the guests vibing with everybody on the same page with me. Let me take some photos of them. I'll take some video of them killing it with the guests. It takes like 30 seconds. And then when you go to make this post, you can show some behind the scenes. Check out this foot, uh, this photographer, by the way, I just want to do some vendor appreciation. Look at this girl. She is awesome. Here's some video of what she did last week when I worked with her. And then you post that and people are seeing how selfless you are. People are seeing that you work with other great vendors. And then the, Vendors are like, dude, you are the freaking best. Are you kidding me? And then they put it on their social media and they share what you're doing. It's a whole thing. And you're not doing it to BS anybody. The beauty of it is it's good. It's everybody loving everybody for the right reasons. You're not promoting people who suck, but you're you're giving some shine to the people who deserve it. And there's definitely nothing wrong with that. I think it's another thing that's invaluable. It's not amount of money that, that that's worth. That's worth just so much in, in appreciation from your people that look at your social and just your friends and your family. Everybody sees what you're doing. You know, you're, you're propping up other people. I think that's the best way to go about it because it's not really all about you. Right? Not everybody else. I don't like this song. Let's end with this. Yes. God, this is better. I'm taking that one out of there. Get it out of there. Ooh. Thanks for joining me. Another gig log. This has been fun. I didn't curse. Somebody shouted me out. Why do you curse, dude? You're a radio guy. Come on, keep it clean. I don't know. Fuck. Sometimes it feels good, man. I have to keep it clean on everything else I do. Why not let my hair down? Keep it real with you guys. If you ever come back, you can expect this from my gig logs. Make sure you subscribe. I hope you do because I got much more to talk about as we close out wedding season. I still got like 10 or 12 weddings left. And then we're on to the winter for which I am very excited. Good luck out there. I hope you're killing it. We'll talk to you soon. DJ Differently.